Hello, welcome to the PyCast for this week. It's a shorter episode, so I've got some products to show off. And you can see on the bench, I've got the Argon 1 case. Gorgeous case. This looks like a piece of tech from The Expanse. Great TV series as well. It keeps your pie cool with an aluminium case. What you've got, hey, SATA, you've got a GPIO connection there, air intakes, connections for HDMI, USB, Ethernet, power, USB-C, a power button. Before Raspberry Pi, put a power button on the Pi 5. And yeah, this is my SATA version. And I've got just over here a version which I've taken apart. There we go. There's Argon 1 NVMe. So this is an NVMe drive. See, it even says it on the back. Your Pi goes in this side and it makes contact with these two thermal pads there. These have some aluminium blocks so you can just see. And make contact with the main case and keep it all cool. You've got an interposer board here which has audio and HDMI. Your GPIO connects here to break out on the top. But it's this bit here that's interesting. NVMe storage, and yeah, there is also, that's another SATA version there. You put your drive in, and then it connects to the Pi via USB. Awesome. Lovely case, and I do enjoy using it. It keeps the Pi nice and cool, and also tidy, because all the cables are at the back, out of the way. So there are also cases for the Raspberry Pi 5, and we've got two there, is the Argon 1 V3, one with NVMe PCIe connection, so nice fast NVMe connection, because it's direct to the PCIe port on the Pi 5, whereas these ones connect via USB, and for that they use these really cool little connectors, but you do have the problem, you're converting down to USB 3, which is still quick, but not as quick as PCIe. So these are the Pi 5 versions, this one's also got a Raspberry Pi Pico RP2040 inside of it. They came out about a year ago, gave them a good review, nice pieces of kit, and again they still look like pieces of kit from The Expanse. You've got these different ones as well, the Neo 5s, Neo 5 NVMe, yeah it has NVMe storage in it, and we've got the Neo 5 in black, which is really just that with no NVMe. Keeps it nice and cool, aluminium, it, yeah it just works. But these aren't what I'm reviewing, because these are now a year old. What I'm reviewing are these. The Argon 1 V5 M2 NVMe PCIe. They've changed the case design. No longer is it a piece of tech from the Expanse. It's quite a, a wider unit. In fact, it pretty much is the width of this box. We also have branded Argon NVMe drives. 128 gig. It's PCIe 3 memory serves. Yep, says it there. And I've got an OLED unit. Now, originally I got this and thought, where does that go? But if you see, just there, that unit pops off. And you can put that Argon Industria OLED module right in there. So it'll give you details like CPU temperature, CPU speed, that sort of thing, system resources. So I'm gonna open this up and have a look inside. So in the box, it's empty now. We have this, which is, yeah, it's, it's a physically larger unit than previous. So there we go, there's the old one for reference. And I'll just bunger a Pi 5 16 gig on top. For reference, there we go. A banana for scale for reference if we need to. Inside, and this is lovely design. I've had a look at this just briefly. Magnetic lid, it just comes off. I'm trying to do this carefully for the camera. There we go two strong magnets there and this is the gubbins that comes with it all the connections and what have you we've got cooler unit there a lovely like a wave heat sink that takes the heat just out nice so my assumption is that the air is going to blow in this direction over the heat sink and take the air out and exhaust that way We've got a PCIe breakout board just here, which we'll get to in a moment. But all of this is to keep your Pi cool and your connections for like the old OLED screen. So the OLED screen's just there. And you'll see just here, we've got two Phillips screws that we need to take out. 
that plastic bezel just pops off and we can put the screen in. But that is, that's metal. I would guess aluminium for that one. So I'm going to put the lid back on and show you the front. So we've got a power button just there, audio and two USB. They're USB 2, if I remember correctly. And around the back, we've got USB-C power, two full-size HDMI, the ports for the Pi 5, so Ethernet and your USB ports. And then two grommets here, which are covering something, which if I just take the back off here, it might reveal what they're connected to. No, it does not. Let's have a look. We've got the same type of interposer board that we saw before. No audio output, so Pi 5's not got that, but we've got the two micro HDMI and USB-C for power. There's our M.2 PCIe board connection, so we can put in an SSD. You'll notice the space for a second one. And I looked on the side of the box, single slot. There is a version with dual slots. Now, whether or not this uses a PCIe packet switch, which is PCIe 2 or 3, if it's PCIe 3, fantastic, it means we get full speed. If it uses PCIe 2, well, we get good speed, but we're getting more storage versus a little less speed. So let's have a look at this board here, because it also gives us access to these two grommets here. So let's just get the screwdriver out and do that. One moment. It suddenly occurs to me I don't need to take those screws out, because... Where those grommets go is on this side here. So we've got two rubber grommets, which I'm going to assume is for external aerials. So if you have a Pi with an external aerial connection, perhaps one day they'll make one. You can route the cables out of there. You've got a better signal. And yes, the interposer board is loose. I did just find that out. There you go. So the interposer board doesn't have an RP2040 like the previous version, but it does pretty much the same functions. USB, HDMI, power, that sort of thing. And it all fits together quite neatly in a nice sort of unit. So this is the review what I've got. So I've got an SSD, the main case, and the OLED module for review. So I'll do a one-shot review for all of this and put it out in the very near future. But I'd be interested to see how it performs against the previous versions because these versions were beasts. They had good cooling, good storage options, and they're relatively cheap as well. And I still am a sucker for the industrial design of this. It looks like the Expanse. I've said it a few times. And Argon's got a good history of cooling and good history of case design as well. Lots of cases for the Pi 5, Pi 4 as well. And also, they've got some weird, wonderful stuff. At one moment, I won't get it. Yep, Argon's also got some really cool coolers. Uh, no pun intended. These coolers are fantastic. Look like hot rod air intakes. Stupid sizes, but they get the job done. Keep it nice and cool. And then we have this beast. And it, uh, am I going to get it in shot? Possibly. I don't know. This is the Argon Eon. Yeah. It's a beast. This is a Raspberry Pi NAS, and again, it looks like it, it should be on a, a Martian Marines spaceship from the Expanse. Gorgeous piece of kit, Raspberry Pi 4 inside of it, and these panels pop off, and you can put in standard SATA hard drives. In fact, let me just get something to open it. So my trick is piece of blue tack. There we go. In there right now is a Seagate 4 terabyte hard drive and a Pi 4, I think it's 4 gig. And the panels just pop off, pop the drives in the SATA connections, let's get it in shot. And away you go. But yeah, so I'm going to enjoy reviewing this new Argon piece of kit. It looks nice. Yes, it's bigger than this version, but we're breaking stuff out a lot neater. We've got a almost like a desktop computer. Lots of aluminium to keep stuff cool. Fast SSD connection via PCIe. And we've got the interposer to break out all the connections to the back, making it nice and easy to work with. I shall have fun with this. Review coming soon. But that is all for this week. We'll see you next week. We've got a special guest next week. Oh yeah, someone from Raspberry Pi is going to join us next week. But for now, see you later.